G'day internet, welcome back to another video and to 2023 and back to the Commodore PET. It's been a while since we've seen this machine, uh, but as you can tell, it finally got its lovely sticker uh, and the machine is looking quite stunning. It is probably one of my most favorite looking machines. But last time we took a look at this machine, I didn't have any way of loading software, but that has changed between uh, a loan from Randall, uh, a generous donation and an item that I purchased. I now have three different ways of uh, loading software that I'd like to show you today. So let's get started. And the first one is quite simply this. This is a Tapwino. Uh, these are fairly ubiquitous. Uh, they come in multiple shapes and sizes. Uh, and essentially uh, they take a micro SD card, uh, and pretend to be a cassette deck. Now, this is obviously the slowest way of loading software, uh, but it does work. And all you need to do is plug it into uh, the cassette port, either here or on the back. Now, I couldn't get this to work on the primary cassette port, which is the one around the back, um, but it's not all bad because, because of its kind of shape and size. Uh, plugging it into the side ones means I can actually read the screen whilst sitting in front of the computer. And if we power on the computer, you can see it springs to life. And simply uh, flipping through the menus, we want to go into play mode. And then we can simply use the arrows to bring up a game. What do we want? How about racer? And we leave it there. Uh, and flip to the computer and we should simply be able to go, if I can remember, is it load, comma, comma, two, because we're using the second drive and hit, I think it's this button. And as you can see, it has found racer and it is loading. This will take a while. And it's finally done and we should just be able to go run and racer starts. Um, I don't know how to play this. What? Something like that. Now the Tapuino is obviously the cheapest way of loading software onto the pet. Uh, it's also the slowest. Um, and you obviously need to find the tap files. The upshot is, is like I said, it's cheap, um, but this particular device can then also be used on both a VIC-20 and a Commodore 64, which is kind of nice. Um, this particular little form factor, one I bought off eBay uh, somewhere here in Australia, it was ages ago, but if I can find it, I'll put a link in the description. Just note that I actually designed this case uh, and printed it, so it doesn't actually come with a case. But as we all know, loading from tape is slow and we can do better. The next device I wanna show you is this. This is the uh, SD to pet future from the future was 8-bit. Uh, and this is, I wouldn't really call it a disk drive emulator. It's almost more like a hard drive emulator. Um, and for most of it, it uses uh, the wedge DOS uh, little operating system to for most of its functionality. The installation of this guy is really simple. Uh, you simply plug it into the IEEE port, uh, and this goes into the rear cassette deck. Just make note of the one, the bit that says top, otherwise it'll go in the wrong way. Um, and that's kind of it. Uh, just ignore this little wire. We'll get to that one in a minute. So with the pet now plugged back in, uh, we basically drive the SD to PET through wedge. Um, but we can simply you go directory, for instance, that'll bring up the directory. And as you can see, wedge is there and we can go wedge, uh, quote, sorry, load, quote, wedge, quote, comma, eight, go, run, and now we're in wedge. Now, I gotta admit, I've got a cheat sheet here because one of the downsides of owning multiple different flavors of computers is there's many, 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 many commands to try and remember. But 
Uh, as an example, we can go at, that'll give us the status of the disk. And we can go at dollar, that'll bring up uh, the directory. So it's the same as going uh, directory. Um, there are some directories here. So for instance, I can go, what is it? Uh, at CD colon, oh, let's just look at temp TMP, go uh, at dollar, enter. There's nothing really in there, right? Uh, and to go back, we can go at CD, back arrow, enter, at dollar, enter, and we're back at the root directory. We can go, it's up arrow, invader.prg, uh, that should load and run it. There we go, we're into Space Invaders. Now Wedge has a ludicrous number of commands you can throw at it to do all kinds of different things like rename files, copy them, uh, shuffle things around, the whole lot. I'm just gonna stick to the basics in this video, both this and for the next device, which is essentially how do you browse around the SD and load something? And there you go. So again, we can open up the directory um, and do whatever we like. So the last device I wanna show you is this. This is the Pet Disk Max from Bitfixer. Uh, and before I get started, I need to send a massive apology uh, to Michael, because he sent me this, oh, probably the best part of 12 months ago. Uh, and I've only just gotten it. Uh, this operates reasonably similar to the uh, SD to PET um, in the sense that it kind of does a hard drive emulation-y kind of thing. It takes a micro SD. Uh, this does, however, have a pass-through, which is kind of nice if you've got another device you want to use. Um, and yeah, it's an odd shape. Uh, and yes, once again, I designed the case for this. There will be a link in the description. Now, to install this, you need to also add in this little clip-on wire. It clips to uh, the last leg of the last uh, large chip here on my particular board, uh, and that is that little wire that you saw hanging out the back. Uh, if my understanding is right, this provides the um, power to the device. Now to install this, it is much uh, like the SD to PET. The only difference is, is that little wire needs to go into the furthest most pin of this little black connector. Focus. Here, right, it goes into the furthest most pin. Uh, and then you just kind of carefully tuck the wire in and plug it in and off you go. Um, and it sits all nice and flush and I made sure the case didn't foul on things and all the rest of it. Now, this is probably one of the biggest differences between the two devices. Um, much like anything, you can just simply go uh, directory and it will show you what's on the SD card. But this uh, particular device doesn't solely rely on Wedge. Now you can use Wedge on this, but it does have a bunch of commands essentially built into it for what I call your basics. Now, obviously we can just simply go something like uh, load invader uh, dot prg comma eight. It'll find it. And you can go run and we're into invader. Now, one of the things you can do straight from here is mount a, a D64, so a disk image. Um, so as an example, we can go load, and it, the syntax is dollar colon, and that's basically all you've got to remember. Um, and we can go pet robots. Uh, I think you've got to put the D64 in, uh, comma eight, right. And here you, we can go, directory, if I spelt it right, and there's the disk mounted, and once again, we could go load, comma, I always go shift, comma, quote, sorry, uh, pet robots, uh, do I need the PRG? I don't. And there's Dave Murray's, uh, well, the shareware version of Dave Murray's uh, Petsky Robots. 
I've really got to get around to ordering a proper copy. So I've got a couple of collections here. So once again, I can go load, uh, quote, dollar colon, uh, let's go with pet mm, nine uh, dot uh, D64, quote, comma, eight, go, found it, directory, and there's the, again, the directory of that. And much like in Wedge, you can uh, pause the scrolling if you've got a long directory with the spacebar. Whoops, helps if the spacebar didn't stick. And from here, if I wanted to, I can simply go load colon, I don't know, alien comma eight. And there we go, there's aliens. Moving around directories is pretty much the same concept. So uh, load quote uh, dollar colon, I've got one here called PRGS. Um, quote comma eight, go uh, directory. That's what's in that directory. Uh, and to go simply back up, it's pretty much the same thing. Load uh, quote dollar colon, but it's just dot dot as you would in DOS, uh, comma eight. And we should be back at the root directory, which we are. And if I go back into that directory, so dollar colon uh, PRGS comma eight, and I can just load any of these PRGs from here. So load quote uh, Pac-Man uh, comma eight. And there's Pac-Man. Do I want instructions? Yes, because I don't know how to play it. Four, six, eight, two. Okay. Are you ready to play? Yes, easy. I'm gonna go easy. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm up the top. I died. I don't know why. And that's simply it. Uh, that is a quick look and a quick overview of some of the devices that are available to load software. Um, on your pet. Well, obviously short of an actual tape deck or an 8050. I've actually got an 8050 now. Remember I said I wasn't gonna get one? There's an 8050 back here, but it's 110 volt and I don't know if it actually works and I don't have a cable. I will be getting back to that though, cause I think it would be nice to have. I kind of, this is fantastic, but with like an 8050 and a period correct printer sitting on top of it, I just think would look Awesome. Now, I do need to give some thank yous. Uh, thank you to Randall for loaning me his SD2 pet, um, which he actually uses on his uh, mini pet, which is also from the future, it was 8-bit. Um, and once again, Michael from uh, Bitfixer, who actually donated uh, the pet disc max uh, when he heard that I was uh, looking for some kind of solution. He's like, hey dude, I'll send you one. So awesome, thanks mate. So where am I on these three devices? Well, let's start with the Tapwino. Uh, the upshot is that it's cheap uh, and it can be used across multiple devices. The downside, of course, is that it's slow. Uh, and my experience, at least, is that there is more software available in D64 format uh, than there is in Tap format, but your mileage may vary. Out of the two other devices, look, the SD to PET is certainly a more, how do I put it, polished product. Um, the Bitfixer, like Michael is a hobbyist who kind of does this on the side. Um, you can tell that like even just with like the proper like plastic case and stuff, this is the more polished of the uh, two devices. Um, but this is also more expensive than the other one. The Pet Disc Max, as far as I'm aware, normally arrives to you in kit form. It's not completely disassembled or anything like that, but um, I'm pretty sure it's the edge connector and the edge socket uh, that needs soldering in. 
uh, and it doesn't come with uh, the nice little case that I designed for it, but if you've got one, the link to the design will be uh, down in the description. Uh, I'm not honestly a huge fan of the way it taps into uh, the five volt power. Uh, I do actually prefer this method. In saying that, because the five volt is completely internal to the machine, um, it does it does look neater at least, and I'm less worried about stuff like me pushing the computer back and getting caught or bumped and stuff like that. So I guess that's a plus. I guess the only thing it really relies on is you willing to pop the uh, pop the hood uh, on your pet. But I would kind of guess that by 2023, anyone who's still owning and using a pet has probably been under the hood many, 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 many times before already. Do I have a favorite out of them though? No, not really. I think they've both got their pros and their cons. Um, I do like the way the pet disc isn't as relied, uh, doesn't rely as much on wedge. Um, but with if you set the SD card up properly, which this one isn't on the SD to pet, uh, you can simply launch into Wedge by going shift run stop. So it's really only one uh, little step. Now, if you're hardcore into your pets, I'm sure you probably already know all the Wedge commands off the top of your head already. Uh, like I said before, I tend to struggle with that kind of thing. Um, so I do like on the pet disc that um, not only are there uh, kind of commands already built in, um, they're very how do I put it, DOS-ish commands. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. But for now, that will pretty much do it. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, uh, click like, subscribe, all the usual YouTube-y stuff. Uh, as always, a massive shout out to my Patreons who are scrolling up the screen as I speak, uh, because without them, well, I wouldn't get loaned things like SD to pet, um, and I wouldn't be able to have dream, grail, whatever you want to call it, machines like this uh, in my collection. And if you'd like to help support the channel, there is a link in the description. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.